Swing trading is a lost art. I've been having some great suggestions by a lot of people through my email, through my Discord, that have been saying, what happened? What has happened in the past couple years? Because people used to talk always about swing trading. And then all of a sudden, the scalping, the faster action got introduced. And all of a sudden, all the people jumped on the bandwagon to scalp, to day trade, instead of swing trading. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. But the reality of things is that a lot of people are just busy throughout the day. They don't have time to scalp. They don't have time to day trade, which is completely normal. So in that case, you're almost a little bit lost. You're like, what should I do? Everyone is scalping. Everyone is day trading. How can I get to a swing trade? It's not talked about enough nowadays. Now, since everything I do and since everything I teach is very fractal, I'm going to go over exactly how you can get to a swing trading plan, even a position trading plan, short term trading plan, where you hold trades over potentially even a couple of hours. That would be the shortest term. But think about a couple of days. Think about catching the weekly range. Think about even catching the monthly range. You can make it as crazy as you want to. And I'm going to show you how. So inside the mentorship as well, this is something I go very in depth on because you need a unique trading plan that fits your time schedule and fits your personality. So if this fits your time schedule, and it fits your personality, then this is perfect for you. Now, first off, I have a notion prepared for you. The notion is in the link in the description. If you could please pause the video here and open that notion. I will also show it on my screen in a bit. I will show what I'm talking about. But if you have the notion on just another screen next to you, then that would be very helpful. All right, we start off with we are always trading either in a monthly, weekly or daily context. If you're not sure what I mean or what I'm aiming at with context, then I would highly advise to after this video, watch the previous video, which was on market maker models. Now, again, you don't need to exactly know what market maker models are as long as you understand the context. Let's say that we have a monthly context. Now, I'm sorry to bother you again with USDJPY, but this is such a beautiful example. And this is exactly the high probability price action that you would want. So let's take a look at this price action right here. If we take a look at this monthly fair value gap right there and this monthly order block right there, if we are continuing higher, we are likely continuing higher off of that monthly order block and that monthly fair value gap, right? So we already have our monthly context because the monthly context is that we are going higher off of this discount rate and we are targeting this premium array right there. In between this low, to that high right there, that is where we want to get involved. But how are we getting involved? If we go into the four hour on this particular price action right there, here we are zoomed in on price action on four hour. Now I'm using the replay tool. I want to show you and take you to the thought process because you can see there is no confusion if you have the context correct. Again, the context will take practice. But the entry model itself, there is no confusion at all. So what do we do once we reach our discount array right there, that monthly discount array? The first thing we wait for is a bullish fair value gap right there. Only a bullish fair value gap right there. That is our ST. Again, there's a separate video on that as well. That ST, again, you don't need a mark structure shift, just a bullish fair value gap right there on the four hour time frame. Before going into the four hour time frame or any time frame that I want to execute on, I already know the steps that I want to take because it's context. That context can be defined even more because inside that context, we have our PD rate that we want to trade off of and we have our longer term target. Then the entry time frame, that is where we want to have an ST, that first fair value gap. Then we want to have a second fair value gap coming off of a discount rate, which is just your short term range, which we talked about in a market structure video. So ST, new short term range off of that ST, overlapping PD array. That is where we want to enter. That is called your original entry. So let's skip price a little bit. Right there, we have a new fair value gap higher. Then we want to enter on the first overlapping part. The first overlapping part is that fair value gap with that order block right there. Where do we place our stop loss? Our stop loss is always on the original entry type. It's always beneath this intermediate term low or of course an intermediate term high so again it's a step-by-step -step process context which leads to your pd rate that you want to trade off of that context also leads to your 
target inside that PD rate that you had established because of the context you want to look for your ST, new short term range, overlapping PD rate. That's where you want to enter. You cover the intermediate term low or the intermediate term high and you target around 1 to 2 RR. What do I mean with around 1 to 2 RR? Sounds very vague, right? It's not. So if we draw R2 out and we go to 1 to 2 RR, what is close to the 1 to 2 RR? Right there, we have some kind of order block and we have that fair value gap. So either what you can do, and again, this is personal preference, you gather data on this and you see what suits you the best. Then right there, what I would advise you to start off with is just a one to two, nothing more. Just make it easy for yourself. Just a one to two. You don't need to target to the left. Only thing you need to do is one to two. Once you can get more advanced and you gather the data around it, then you can potentially look at targeting even more. But we start off with a one to two. Now, right here, we get tagged in right there. We experience some drawdown. Perfect. And then eventually it hits our target. In the meantime, there's more things that I want to go over because ideally when you are swing trading, so every single entry that I will show you, ideally you want to be entering on a Monday, Tuesday, or a Wednesday. Again, a Monday, if we have the news going for us, like we talked about in news episodes, or a Tuesday where we have news, or Wednesday where we have news. That's your ideal scenario. Then, of course, once we are in the trade, what are we looking to do? We are looking to manage our risk. Inside the notion, you will see that I have a rule. Go break even when price has no reason to return based on a lot and flood. Lot, again, remember, it's last line of defense. Flood is first line of defense. So based on flood and lot, when can we go break even right here? We've been tagged in right there. We have this new fair value gap higher right there. This entry where we just enter right there and we have this lag higher, this new short term range from this low to that high. Is there a reason for price to come back to our entry and then go higher? Yes, because based on the first line of defense, we have this breaker right there sitting at our entry and we have this fair value gap right there. And the last line of defense is way beneath our original entry. So yes, there is a reason that price can return to our entry right there. Then if we follow along with price action, eventually what we'll see, we have a new fair value gap there. We have an order block there. Now there's no new swing low being created. So there's no new short term range. This is still your short term range. Is there a reason for price to come back to your entry right there? Yes, there is. So what do we do? We follow again the new short term range. This new short term range from this low to that high. What is your first line of defense? That fair value gap. Afterwards, you have this order block right there. You have this mitigation block as well right there. And this is your last line of defense. That last line of defense, is it above your entry? Is there a reason for price to come back to your entry right there? No, there's not. So at this moment in time, once this fair value gap right there, so let me show you, this fair value gap has been created right there. That is when you go break even. Why this fair value gap and not that fair value gap? Because this fair value gap is above that high to the left right there. That is when you go break even because based on that, on the short term ranges and on the flood and the lot, there's no reason for price to do this. You don't keep your stop loss at these lows at the intermediate term low just because you're like, oh, I don't know, it might do something like this and then continue higher. I just want to take the win. I'll do whatever it takes. I just want to win. No, go break even. Please protect your capital. It's very important. So this right here is the first entry which we call for a monthly context, this is your original entry. After the original entry has played out, you either miss the trade and it played out or it played out and you were a part of it. Now, either one of those, what you want to do is you now want to zoom out and you want to go up in timeframes. When you go up in timeframes, we again have a step-by-step -step process because we're still trading the same exact thing from that monthly context, that discount array to that premium array right there. The thing you want to do is what you see in Notion. It is called the re-entry opportunity. It is important to understand that first, the four-hour opportunity already happened. Four-hour entry is either missed or you are already break even or it already hit take profit. So you need to be at least break even. That's the minimum. Then you want to zoom out to the daily time frame. Enter on the overlapping part of the short-term range. Cover short-term low slash short-term high. Now, right here, it is pretty vague because right here we don't really have an overlapping part. 
We have somewhat of a short term range, but it's still part of our intermediate term low. Perfect. Let's not take this trade. Let's wait. Let's wait until we have a new short term range. This right here is what? It's our new short term range. So we have a signal. An alarm goes off. And right now we want to pay attention because now we follow the steps again. We enter on the overlapping part of the short term range. The overlapping part is right there because we have this first line of defense then the overlapping part right there. Overlapping is always a fair value gap with another discount rate. So it's either a fair value gap with an order block, break block or mitigation block. And we have this last line of defense right there. So we already know we want to enter on the overlapping part right there. That is our entry and we cover what? We cover the short term low or the short term high of that short term range, which is initially that low right there. Now, once we target this high, what can we see? It's a 0 0.8, 0 0.8 RR. In this case, you are also allowed to cover only the bodies of the candles right there. Then your target is the context high or low. So in this case, we are trading a monthly context. So we are using the monthly context high or low. And of course, the target is the monthly context high right there. Then again, same thing. We go break even when price has no reason to return based on lot and flawed. So right here, we get tagged in right there and we target those highs. Now, again, what you can do, it's important. You can target on the re-entry a 2R as well, but you don't need to target because if you already were a part of that first move, then it's perfectly fine to just target that monthly high. But this is also where your data gathering, etc., comes in. The only thing that I want you to understand, you can for sure target just a one to two right there. You can do that. But I want you to be break even once we reach that original target in the form of that monthly context high. You need to be break even right there. Whatever happens after, it's fine as long as you're break even. So eventually, we reach that original target and then eventually we are still in the motion to continue to that one to two RR right there. This is a trading plan on the monthly context, but we also have a weekly context trading plan and we also have a daily context trading plan. And each of the contexts can be defined by you have your original opportunity, your original entry and the re-entry and they're all the same. They're just fractal. So let's go over the weekly context and the daily context as well. All right, weekly context. So if we zoom out to the weekly, we have this fair value gap right there. We have that order block. It's just important to understand the weekly context right here is that we are moving higher from that discount array on a weekly basis and we're targeting that original high right there. That discount array to that premium array, that is exactly your weekly context. Now, again, it's important to understand I am doing it in this order, the monthly context to the weekly context to the daily context. That is the highest probability. But if you only have a weekly context, then that's perfectly fine. If you only have a daily context, then it's also perfectly fine. As long as it's high probability. High probability meaning that you're scouting for the pairs or the instruments. I have a list of the pairs inside the notions, a list of the instruments that you will be going over. And you will be going over them and scouting those pairs and scouting the price action on those instruments and seeing on the daily, weekly or monthly, what is the highest probability instruments that I can trade for the coming week. So that is something that is a process you would do on the weekend. And then when you're truly busy throughout the week, the only thing you need to do is you need to focus on we're coming into that context area. So that PD array and we want to look for our entry model. That's all it is. The hard work is done when you do have the time on the weekend to look at the highest probability instruments that you want to be trading. Now, again, it's important to understand you don't execute on multiple pairs all at once. Be careful with your risk. Maximum 2% risk at the time. So that means if you're risking 1% on every setup, then there's only two setups that you can take at that time. If you're already in a trade, with 1% risk, then you can only take a maximum of one new trade. So that is how you find the pair. And that is where the hard work is done. The hard work is when you do have the time. Again, I call it hard work, but it's truly not hard work. It takes me literal seconds to see if a pair is high probability. Now, again, you might not have that experience just yet. And you might take some more losses in the beginning, which is completely fine. You need to understand that that is part of the process. So accept that you need to accept that fact. All right, 
if we go over the weekly context, our original entry is again one hour ST plus for value gap plus overlapping entry. Then we have a cover intermediate term low slash intermediate term high. Target to our minimum, go break even when price has no reason to return based on lot and flood. So if we use the replay tool right here, we go into the one hour and we wait for price to come into that weekly fair value gap. Here we are on the one hour time frame, and prices just came into the weekly fair value gap right there where we expect prices to move higher because we have that context, discount array to premium array. First thing we see is an ST right there. The next thing we need is a new short term range. So that is where we have a new short term range. Now we're waiting and we want to enter on the overlapping part. We have this overlapping part right there, that high with the fair value gap, it's overlapping. So we enter off of that. That is our first entry. But what you'll see, we create a new short term range higher. When that happens, you follow along with the short term range until you do get an entry opportunity right there and the RR is still worth it. So let me explain what that means. Right here, you would enter on the overlapping part again. You cover the intermediate term low. Again, you can cover the bodies right there. That's perfectly fine. And then you target a one to two, which is sitting right there. Start off with a one to two. It's perfectly fine. Afterwards, what you're seeing is you have new ranges higher and you wait to go break even. Now, let's say you missed this. Then you go over the checklist. Was there an opportunity? Yes, there already was an opportunity. So you don't enter again. You don't follow the short term ranges again. You would not take a new entry right there. For example, that breaker with the value gap. It's not a one hour entry you would take. And then once the original entry has happened and we could see that it has hit our take profit right there, then what do we do? We now go into the four hour time frame because re entry for the weekly context, one hour opportunity has already happened. One hour entry is either missed or your break even. Or of course you hit take profit, etc. That doesn't really matter. Zoom out to the four hour time frame. Enter on the overlapping part. Again, same process that we did on the monthly context. Four hour right here. And let's not forget, when would you go break even on this trade right here? This is where it's more difficult to decide to go break even. But again, I'll explain to you when I would go break even. After this candle higher, we are closer to the target right there. than we are to the entry right there now again based on lot and flood right there that is our lot and this is our plot that for value gap being created or even in the meantime that breaker right there then we do have a reason to come back but based on your logic all the videos that we have gone over is it logical for price again when it's close to the drawn liquidity right there when it's close to your target as well for price to come all the way back down there and then go higher? No. So you go break even right there when you see it's close to your target. And the lot is just, just below your entry right there. This is still where you would go break even. And afterwards, what do we do? We look for our re-entry. So the same context and we look for our re-entry. We're entering on the short term range. So we skip price. We have a first short term range right here. But again, let's wait for a new short term range if we do get that. We don't get a new short term range and we take out that target before getting a new short term range. Perfect. We missed a potential entry opportunity right there. Perfectly fine. You will miss more entry opportunities. This will not be the last time that you will miss an entry opportunity. The important part is once that target has been taken, what did we talk about again? You need new context. Always there needs to be context. That is the main premise behind everything. Then for our last one, our daily context. If we go and look at the old price action, what we just saw, actually, if we go look at the same context that we had, we were inside the monthly context and we had this daily short term range right there. And then right there, we go into the one hour time frame. Here we are in that daily context because we're moving from a daily discount to that daily premium array right there. So that is our target. Now we wait again for our one hour ST plus fair value gap plus overlapping entry right there. We have our first ST, but we didn't get a new short term range higher. So we wait. Then right here, we have our first ST again, because you would count this as a new ST once we take out that first ST right there. And you wait, you wait for a new short term range higher. That is where we have a new short term range higher. So you want to enter on an overlapping part. 
anything with a fair value gap that is overlapping with either a high or whatever it is. Then right there, since this high is what? It's already overlapping with, because inside of that high, inside this is what? There's a fair value gap sitting right there. What you would do now is you cover again the bodies of the intermediate term low right there. And then if there's an opportunity for one to two RR, then we take the trade and we see there's not an opportunity right there for one to two. So 1.71. Now, since we are still in the monthly context, I would allow it to target that one to two, which is just above that high right there. Only because we are still in a bigger context. And then again, it's important to ask yourself, did you already take the daily trade based on the monthly context? Or are you just taking this one hour trade based off of the daily context inside that bigger monthly context? Whenever you have context in context in context, so you have your daily in context of the weekly and the weekly is in context of the monthly, that is the highest probability price action. So right here, this is something I would allow. That is valid in my opinion. After that, when do we go break even? Perfect. This is already a perfect opportunity to go break even. Close to the drawn liquidity, would we expect to come back to that tiny order block right there to then continue higher? No, of course not. Doesn't make any sense. So right there, we are break even. So what can we do? We can actually look at already a new entry opportunity on the four hour. And in the four hour, what are we seeing? We have this right there. Let me remove the one hour right there. Let's remind ourselves or what, of what our target is which is right there. That is our one hour target. Let's remove the entry and let's look at a four hour entry because now we're doing the exact same thing. Four hour entry. We enter on the overlapping part, which is that high with that overlapping fair value gap right there. And we cover the short term range, which is that low right there. And our target is that high. Now, again, since we're in a monthly context, could we go for a one to two here as well? Yes, we can. We can even use the same exact target as that we had right there. But what if this target hits and then all of a sudden it goes back to break even? Of course, that could happen. So just use the original easy target right there and make sure you profit off of one of the trades. And then eventually this one hits take profit right there. And then after another while, this one hits take profit as well. This is exactly a swing trading plan. This is called the swing trading plan lost art. Again, the notion is in the link in the description. And please do consider subscribing, giving a like. If you don't want to miss anything, turn on your notifications as well. Do whatever you feel like doing. <laughs> if you do want more of this, again, check out the mentorship as well. Link in the description. You'll love the mentorship. And then I'll see you at the next one. Perfect. Thank you.